for the first time in your life, you are seeing zero dollar silver. And a lot of people are freaking out about this. I'm getting all kinds of messages. Ron, what's going on? Why is silver at zero dollars? Look, it's very easy to understand why this is happening for the first time in our lives. But what's even more interesting and more important is that we understand what's causing this to be the case and examine whether that gives us some clues as to whether this number will go back to normal, go back to 200, go back to 100. We're going to talk about that, me and you and the bear in this video right now. So you're heading over to the very popular website, debtclock.org. It has a plethora of very scary information for us regarding national debt, regarding all types of things. If you haven't been there, I'd recommend you go check it out. But when you move over to the right hand side and look at our favorite metal, silver, we love gold too, no offense to gold, but when you look at silver, it shows a big goose egg, a big zero. The dollar to silver ratio is zero, and that's the first time ever that we've seen this number. But we need to dig in and figure out how that number is calculated that easily explains to us, right, you're going to school. I know Susie's not gonna run down and offer me coffee, but that's the school bell. I'm gonna explain to you why that's a zero. It is a ratio, is all that it is. It takes the change in money supply on the top and divides that by the change in the amount of silver produced in the last year. Okay, now, here's where it gets real easy. The change in money supply, that's the top number, that's actually negative for the first time ever. We're going to talk more about that and why that's so important in the future. But first, let's figure out how this math works, right? So you have change in money supply on top, M2 money supply, which is negative, essentially zero, divided by the change in silver. Guys, when you divide zero by anything, you know what the answer is? Zero. It'd be like me announcing right now that I'm going to evenly distribute my silver stack amongst all of my subscribers to Ron's Basement. Aren't I a generous fella? Until you realize that I have zero silver, right? So I can divide zero by any number and it always comes to zero. It'd be like if I decided to... Uh, divide my brain cells evenly amongst my two twin daughters. But then when we find out that I only have zero brain cells, well, guess what? They get nothing. If you're freaking out about the zero dollar silver, I hope you found a safe place here in the basement because you're always welcome here. Hey, I even have a giant teddy bear you can hug. Please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment in the comment section below. So that top number is the M2 money supply. I think it's time we all go back to school. Briefly, what is the M2 money supply? It's basically all the money in the economy. Let me read this fancy description to you. M2 is the United States Federal Reserve's estimate of the total money supply, including all of the cash people have on hand, plus all of the money deposited in checking accounts, I just thought of something very interesting we're going to ask at the end of this. Savings accounts and other short-term savings vehicles, such as certificates of deposits, retirement account balances, and time deposits above $100,000, those are emitted from M2. M2 is like the biggest measure of money. M1 only counts like cash and money people have in checking accounts. M2 is like all the money. But here's my question. Have you ever wondered? I'm very curious about this, and I don't think it is included. But are silver and gold bullion included in that M2 money supply number, right? Remember, in the U.S. Constitution, silver and gold are explicitly mentioned as being the only real form of money. But I guarantee you that Jerome at the Federal Reserve doesn't count gold and silver bullion in that M2 money supply number. And this is where it starts to get very interesting. I've got an article from Reuters. 
New York. I've never been to New York. I know I have viewers in New York. If one of you lives in a giant mansion and I could bring my daughters out there for a couple nights, that would be awesome. Nonetheless, let's get back to Reuters and this M2 money supply. The amount of money sloshing around the U.S. economy shrank last year for the first time on record. First time on record. A development that some economists believe bolsters the case for U.S. inflation pressures to continue to abate uh, the Federal Reserve's main measure of the nation's money stock, known as M2 supply, slid for the fifth straight month in December, dropping by a record $147 billion, $150 billion. The amount of money in the economy shrank, and that was for the first time. This is an outlier. But what I want to bring up, what I think is so important, is we need to look at this within the context of the fact that like over the last two years, the printing binge that the Federal Reserve went on, they printed like 40% of the U.S. dollars in existence during like an 18-month period. I mean, they just like blew it out, right? It'd be like this. And this is why that shrinking M2 is not that big of a deal. It'd be like if you called me up and said, hey, Ron, I've been a really bad boy or girl for the last year. I've been just eating like a hog. I've been spending too much time at the old feeding trough. And over the last year, I went from weighing 180 pounds to weighing 300 pounds. I gained 120 pounds, right? But then you say, but I'm doing a lot better now because in the last month, I lost three pounds. Hey, that's great, right? But that doesn't uh, negate the fact that you'd gained 120 in the previous 12 months. And that's really what we're seeing now with this money supply number going down, which again, that's the number that this ratio on the debt clock divides into. That's zero. And that's why we're getting zero on the U.S. debt clock. So you really have nothing to worry about regarding this zero dollar silver. We know the Federal Reserve will go back to printing money like they have for the last five, six decades. And the number on the U.S. debt clock will shoot right back through the roof. It's mathematically impossible with the amount of crazy debt we have out there and everything else that they're not going to have to have easy money policy in the future like they've had for the last decades. We know what to expect, and we know that number, even on the U.S. debt clock, will go right back to sky-high levels. Hey, I appreciate you joining me here in the basement. I hope you feel welcome here. You can come back anytime, watch another video, but most importantly, until next time, take care of yourself and be well.